Okay. So I, I have, um, there's a formula called divisor sum, actually, it's funny, I left that. So this is me trying to understand how to use this divisor sum um, function in mathematics, and you use it in kind of a weird way. You pass a number, and then this command, which is a, a strange, very strange looking command, but this is, just gives us the divisor sum. So I don't, I, it's an odd, an odd construction in Mathematica. But what I've done here is I've done a, a I've said we're going to look at the first 10 numbers. I'm going to make a table of the divisor sum of our number going from uh, 1 to 10. Mm -hmm. And you can see this divisor sum of 1 we said was 1, 2 was 3, 3 was 4, 4 was 6, mm -hmm. uh, sorry, 4 was 7, 5 was 6, six, six, six was, was 12, 7 was 8, 8 was 15. Mm -hmm. Nine looks like it's thirteen. Thirteen. And then and ten. And ten. So you can see the plot of the divisor sum seems to be increasing. And I can go to a hundred and I get this. But tell me what you see in this graph. So well I it's general it's just sort of increasing. You don't like this is there's sort of like a bottom line here. At least I think this bottom line is the prime numbers. Ah, okay. Because none of they don't, they have the least number of divisors. All right, and um, this this upper there's like a lower limit and an upper limit, okay. sort of to how how big the sum can get. Interesting. All right, well, let's look up to a thousand and see what we see. There's, there there's like a second line or maybe a third line in there too. Hmm. Hmm. Well, yeah, that, that this line seems to be like really, really straight, and I think that's it's just the prime number plus one. Yeah. That, okay. That seems about right. All right. What about the top? What about the upper bound part so of it? Those are just those are going to be numbers that have a lot of factors. Okay. That I guess are the product of a lot of. A lot of different primes. All right, let's go to ten thousand. See if we see any more structure here. So it looks like there's a lot of numbers, sort of like the halfway point of this mm -hmm. structure, and then it's the thin out. Like there's many more numbers. I guess here with twenty thousand. Sure, there's many more numbers that have less than. It, divisors are here, right? Yep. Less than 20,000. Well, no, sorry, this is the divisor sum. Okay. So, there's many more numbers that have a divisor sum of less than 20,000 than have more than 20,000. Do you think that's a true statement? Yeah. I mean, there's more numbers, I guess, less than 20,000 than there are from 20,000 to 35,000. So, um... Do you think that's true in general? Do you think there will be more numbers whose divisor sum is less than 20,000 than numbers whose divisor sum is greater than 20,000? No, that would not be true for all numbers. Why not? Because then when numbers get giant, like if we did like a billion, uh -huh. 20,000 20, would be like all the way down here and you've got the entire rest of the numbers. Yeah. In fact, uh, once I get above a certain number, I can be guaranteed that the divisor sum will yeah. not be less than 20,000. Because you'll, your number will be. Above 20,000. Yeah. Okay. So that's good. And uh, let's just, for fun, let's see what it looks like at 100,000. Okay. So it, it, it actually looks like there is definitely some structure going on here. The, the top of this triangle is not necessarily a straight line. It's got a little bumps yeah. high and low, but the bottom does the bottom seem is a straight line. very much like a straight line. And that got me wondering, kind of a fun question. Like what could we say about these? And so this is what I was doing during the uh, during the movie last night. I was looking at the mean uh, of the numbers. Um, right? And the, the trouble with the with the mean is ob obviously since I'm adding up a bunch of integers and dividing, I'm getting. A, a rational number, but I, I didn't really know what that number was. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna instead of reporting it as a fraction, I'm gonna report it as a real number.
or as a decimal, I mean. All right. Okay, so there's the mean. So at 10, the mean is about 8.7. At 100, so this is, by the way, the mean of all the numbers, the sum of the divisors of all the numbers from 1 to 100. Turns out to be about 82.99, 82. roughly 83. Mm -hmm. So the mean of all the, of the sum of the divisors of the numbers from 1 to 10 was about 8, was 8.7, then it was about 82. So when I multiplied the number of numbers by 10, what did I do to the mean? You, you I mean, essentially, just multiply it by 10. Okay. And so now when I go to 1,000, so I'm multiplying by another 10. Yeah, so what happens to the mean? So, you know, the 10, basically. Goes up by another 10. And Although it's, it's not quite, because it is getting smaller. You're right. It's not quite. So what I decided to do instead was start looking at, at since it looked like the mean was just scaling by the same factor, I decided to divide it by my original number. So now I'm at 0 0.87, and maybe just for fun I'll put it to 10 decimal places so I keep looking at the same thing. Uh, all right, 100, 82, 1,000, 100,000, Oh, sorry, 10,000. 8,225 instead of 8, 2, 3. Does it look like this is converging to something? Almost like eight, like point eight, and then two repeating. Okay, let's go. Let's try a million. This is probably the. This takes about ten seconds. Dun, da, da, da. It, didn't, it didn't decrease much. Okay. Or six eight. So it does seem like it's converging yeah. to some number. We don't know what that number is. Yeah. But here's. Here's the, here's a surprising fact. Oops, I'm gonna go. I played around trying to figure out what this number was. And I found, sorry, it's hard to type through this. Here's pi squared over 12, 0.822467. Huh. Wow. And then I looked it up, and it turned out, in fact. Does that converge to pi squared over 12? So, what does this say? It says if I take the, all the integers from 1 to some <coughs> number n, yeah. and I sum up all the divisors, and I take the average, and you divide it by n. And then I divide by n. I get pi squared over 12. Wow. Yeah. Surprising. So in the beginning of this, we found a, a surprise that the integers actually seem to have formulas for the sum of their divisors, which that all by itself is a big surprise. And then we found a gigantic surprise that somehow the sum of divisors relates to pi squared over 12. Yeah. Is that a surprise? Yeah. Yes. <laughs> yes. So there's a surprising pi squared over 12 hiding in the integers somewhere. Hmm. Do you know where it is? No. It's at right at 101 though. Actually, it's, it's hiding in there somewhere. Hmm. Pretty surprising. Yeah. So this is, this is kind of a, a great example of why number theory is such a cool subject. Yeah. Because you, you you get these amazing surprises all the time, and I was just I was just goofing around with this while we were watching the movie last night. Anyway, I wanted thought it'd be fun to show you. High five, guys! Good work this morning.